Hey everyone, Admiral Seabass here for Western Allies Turn 2. For cyber attacks, uh, I'm going to do these in order. NATO is going to use all four of its cyber warfare points to do an infrastructure attack on Russia. Um, Russia has one it can use to try to counter this if they need to. So here's the roll. And no successes for NATO on that. So Russia doesn't even need to spend that point. Uh, that would have caused Russia to lose money. Okay, uh, next, uh, the U.S. is going to spend all five of theirs on geopolitical influence because they really want Philippines this turn. So they have five. And I will go ahead and roll those. <laughs> also, no successes. Um, I literally rolled almost everything except a six. Uh, and then... The Pacific Coalition really wants Indonesia. So they will use three of their points for geopolitical influence as well. And they did get a success. And so, unfortunately for Pacific Coalition, the Eastern Pact has three of their own uh, cyber warfare points left. So they get to roll three dice to try to counter the success. And they do. So that is not good. Uh, but now we move to geopolitical influence, and I'll just keep it here. So Pacific Coalition will use their free dice on uh, Indonesia, and they missed. The US will use their free dice on Philippines. And they missed. And I think NATO is going to go for Argentina Chile again. Mostly because it's two IPP. Oh, that was not good. I just knocked a bunch of stuff off the US dashboard. Uh, so here, let me look at this. Going for Argentina Chile here, very top. And they missed also. So pretty bad start to the turn for the Western Allies. Okay, uh, continuing Western Allies turn for funding research projects, which is basically technology. My strategy is the U.S. is going to spend two uh, for two attempts a turn, and NATO and Pacific Coalition will spend for one attempt a turn. My rationale being, even at one attempt a turn, over six turns on average, they should get one uh, technology. So um, that is <clears throat> my strategy anyway. So I need to roll these. I'm just taking the cyber warfare uh, points off there because they used them all. I didn't hit with any of them. So uh, let's roll for the U.S. first. Uh, they get two dice. And they're looking for a six. They didn't get it. All right, let's roll for Pacific Coalition. Ha, ah, there we go. They got a six. That's a success. So they will get... Hang on just a minute. They got next generation fighters. So that means their fighters attack and defend at eight, but they also cost two extra dollars. So <clears throat> last but not least, let's roll for NATO's tech. And they missed. All right, so that's it for funding research projects, which is technology. Okay, for factory orders for the Western Allies turn two, the U.S. bought two next-gen MBTs. Remember, they have next-gen MBT technology, so all their MBTs are now next-gen MBTs. And uh, they cost two more. That's 16. And then uh, they bought two airborne, an attack helicopter, and two infantry these two next-gen MBTs will go um, to the northern United States or the southeastern United States. It doesn't really matter. And these will eventually go to Europe. These two airborne, this helicopter, and these two infantry will go over here. And notice the airborne and the helicopter. Um, the U.S. over here, they can't, they can't build anything any closer to the Pacific front than Hawaii. So they need stuff that will move a long way 
over land or by, by Navy, but they're moving their LHDs forward. I don't really want to build another one and have to protect it. So airborne and helicopters, I think, make a lot of sense for the United States over here, particularly if they're going to build out of Alaska up there and push forward. Okay, so the Pacific Coalition built two MBTs and five infantry. They're wanting to build at least one of these MBTs in Korea, uh, South Korea, and uh, perhaps the other one in Taiwan or in India itself. And then the five infantry gives them flexibility uh, as well. And then last but not least, NATO uh, is Air Force is depleted. So they bought a fighter and they also bought four infantry. So we'll move on to combat orders now. Okay, let's show you the combat orders phase, Western Allies turn two. They're going to try to hit Venezuela again. We're going to take these two infantry in from Panama. We're going to take this fighter in from Brazil. Then, I think we're in range to hit South Africa Coalition. So watch this. So, uh, hang on. Yeah, these two infantry here are going to hop on this LHD. And then they are going to come down here to South African Coalition. Sub's going to come down here too. He's going to fire a cruise missile into South African Coalition. So let me pay that. And I'll put the U.S. cruise missile here. This LHD has moved down too. The helicopter's movement's in the air. One, two, three. Aircraft movement is in the air. One, two, three. Like this. Now, drones, um, this carrier can move here like this. Dr drones have a movement of two. Aircraft movement is considered to be in the air. So if that was true, he would have to stop here and would not be able to go into combat. But um, I think he should be able to go into combat anyway. So that's the way I'm going to play it there. Okay, and then up here... This frigate, this frigate, this attack helicopter are gonna go try to take out that Russian sub. And then for the liberation of Germany, we're gonna take these two US next gen MBTs, that fighter, that drone, uh, this. This infantry from Denmark. Mm. I'll take one infantry from Italy. Like that. And then those main battle tanks are going to blitz if they have combat movement left. And the rest hopefully join these four infantry from Italy. Plus this fighter. One, two, coming off this LHD down here. And then this sub is going to fire... Oh, wait, how am I going to get into Turkey? Hang on, let me figure that out. You know, I think Turkey's too far this turn. So we're not going to go into Turkey, but this guy, this sub is going to fire a cruise missile to try to take out this LHD again. So they pay that cruise missile cost. Okay, and then over here, we got a lot of big stuff going on over here. So, I think I calculated this correctly. I want to leave five infantry behind in India. The rest are coming into Southeast Asia along with a whole boatload of crap. Drones. Next-gen fighters now, which attack and defend at eight. Uh, these two helicopters. Oh my gosh, I have way more infantry than I thought I did. Oh wait, I almost put that on the wrong stack of guys. We go. These two helicopters are coming in. Also, and then this guy can fire a cruise missile in, which he will do. They've only got two left. 
So we'll definitely fire a cruise missile into here like that. Uh, this US helicopter can go in as well. And then this guy can move here and this guy can move here. They will both fire cruise missiles also. This is uh, the last cruise missile for uh, the Pacific Coalition and they didn't buy any more. So we'll have two more cruise missiles going in there. Up here, the uh, fighter who's on Taiwan is going to go one, two and do a surgical strike there. And there's nothing uh, that anybody can do about that. And then uh, Operation Sub Cleanout will continue up here. So this frigate will try to take out that guy. This frigate will try to take out that guy. Uh, I really want to move all my Navy down here to the South China Sea. So I got to be careful how I do this. This helicopter is going to go up here and try to take up that guy. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm just knocking stuff over left and right here. And then this frigate's going to go one and try to take out that guy, which you couldn't see. This frigate there, this frigate was here because I placed him last turn. He's going to try to take out that sub. Uh, oh, I've got another helicopter. So I really want to take out this guy. So this other helicopter will come in here and join that attack and then he can go land someplace else. All right. I think that is it for combat orders movement. Let's start resolving these combats. Good start for the Western allies as these two infantry and fighter just took this guy out with no reprisal. So we will flip that over, and Venezuela is now in control of the Western Allies. That's not only three IPP, but that's a victory point swing, and it's a three IPP swing as well. So uh, good start to the turn for the Western Allies. So here, these three all attack at four. So attacking a sub, they get half of their attack value. So, and they miss, of course. <laughs> so the sub escapes, which is kind of cool, actually. All right, so let's go to Germany. I'll resolve that off screen and let you know what happened. More good news. Um, Germany has been retaken. So, these two guys are gone, and they did manage to get one hit on the Western Allies, but it wasn't a target select. So, Western Allies will take an infantry. And then these guys will blitz into here, and they'll have two combat rounds remaining. And that's another set of victory points, and that's seven IPP swing. So, NATO's up to 32, Russia's down... To 25. All right, and then I'll resolve that combat. And I have to remember these two next gens only have two combat rounds remaining. These other units can go uh, the full three. I don't know that it'll matter because Russia only has one MBT remaining. More good news. Western allies keep rolling here. Uh, they took this guy out with no hits in return, even though he had a drone. So, that's another three. That's not a victory star. But, Russia's now down to 22, beneath where they started the game at. And NATO's up another three. So, uh, let's go ahead and do this cruise missile strike. Let's see if NATO's good fortune can continue. Well, <laughs> They got a hit, but um, it wasn't a target select. And uh, so now Caliphate has a choice to make. I think Caliphate will lose the LHD anyway, or would they? No, that's a flexible unit. Um, they'll lose the frigate. 
And if NATO wants to take it out, then maybe it's a good indication that they should keep it on the board. All right, I'm going to resolve the battle for South African coalition. I'll let you know what happens. Even more good news. Caliphate will lose this, and that will be reclaimed for South African coalition, and they got no hits whatsoever. So that's another victory star. And that's two for Pacific Coalition and two down for the Caliphate. And then this is a massive one. I'm probably going to have to do this on the battle board. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here and let you know how this turns out. Here's the battle for Southeast Asia. Pretty epic. Of course, these next-gen uh, fighters that... Uh, Pacific Coalition have our super handy, and we're going to put a drone on one of those. Uh, cruise missiles doing the first strikes. Tons of infantry. Uh, I think China's in trouble, but uh, Pacific Coalition rolls bad. Uh, could get ugly for them, too. So I'll let you know how this turns out. Okay, so Western Allies did take Southeast Asia. And look at this. They are back to even. China, China will go down five to 35 Pacific Coalition will go up to 32 here's the thing though uh, I said uh, it was still going to be tough Pacific Coalition have one infantry left <laughs> in terms of a land unit um, just one and uh, they lost like uh, something like 11 infantry and a main battle tank the uh, Chinese fighter got a target select on the very last round of uh, combat and took out the MBT from Pacific Coalition. So anyway, that was extremely bloody for both sides, but uh, Pacific Coalition did take it. All right, uh, let's go ahead and do these on screen, uh, these sub-attacks. So again, two uh, attack helicopter and a frigate normally attack at four, but they have that. So got him. Boom, that was big. That's the one they wanted. And then up here, frigate at two or less misses. So he survives. And then up here, this guy is at two or less. Nope. So that sub survives. And this guy up here is also two or less. Oh, three almost, so he survived. So we got one of the subs, which is about what we should have done, statistically speaking. So pretty dang good turn for the uh, Western Allies, and they got everything back to even. You got to think now, Eastern Pack on uh, turn three might be thinking nukes, um, especially down here, um, or maybe especially in Central Europe there too. But anyway, uh, let's think through, um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and do the strategic movement for the Western Allies, and I'll let you know where things stand after that. Okay, strategic movement was fun and uh, big. So I originally moved all my stuff, my Navy and a bunch of stuff into Taiwan from Hawaii, but then I realized that China has those anti-ship ballistic missiles. They could have launched one from this naval base. I just don't want to risk that yet. Uh, so I beefed up Taiwan. I sent um, a next-gen MBT in there as a sea lift. Um, and I landed a helicopter there who had attacked a sub this turn. I think there's enough there to protect it. Plus, now that I'm at, like, at zero victory points, I'm not as worried about losing Taiwan. Um, I consolidated a bunch of stuff here. Um, Southeast Asia is lightly defended. Uh, I'm not as worried about that right now. Um, here's the way things look down here, um, and then up here, uh, and then here in, uh, in, uh, Germany. So anyway, yeah, I'm going to place units and then, uh, call it a turn. As promised, the U.S. put two next-gen MBTs there, and then over here, two airborne, two infantry, and a helicopter, uh... NATO put one infantry in Greece, two in Balkan states, one in Denmark, and their fighter there in Paris. 
And now I just have to figure out the Pacific Coalition. I think Pacific Coalition is just going to put it all in India again. So that's two MBTs and five more infantry there. And they go again next turn. Uh, there's no special things to do here at the end of the turn other than collect income. And uh, Pacific Coalition will get 32 IPP, NATO will get 35, and the U.S. will get a cool 46. So that's the end of Western Allies turn number two. Hope you guys enjoy this. I know I sure did. Take care.